Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Sisso here, bringing guys yet another Illustrator tutorial here today. So if you guys don't know already, that means it's a logo design tutorial. Let's get it. I know it's been a while. However, I don't know. I know a lot of you guys are subscribed to me for logo design tutorials, but if you didn't know already, if you won't follow me on Twitter, at SissoHQ, um, if I've been learning mascot designing. I've been really, really striving, putting mad hours into it and really trying to understand the fundamentals, the basics of mascot design. So I wanted to hit you guys with a sketch plus Illustrator tutorial on how to go about uh, creating your mascot design designing and really learning how to do, uh, you know, you don't really have to, you really don't know how, you, excuse me, you really don't know how to, how the hell is it, you really don't know, you really don't have to know how to draw, there you go, it's basically just really trying to figure out how your shapes are like fundamental and like how they're like, you know, composed and all that cool stuff, so I, I really did, I think I did a pretty good job explaining it, so if you guys want to check that out, of course, I should about to watch right now, so don't ever forget, two likes on the video equals a secret down below, which will most likely be the illustrator file of today's video, so if you guys want to go ahead and like explore in the file, you of course, just leave a like, all that cool stuff, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you guys did not already know, in the description down below, there's a Black Friday sale going on on my selfie.com slash store, which means the everything pack now is 50% off the the fourth time in the pack's history being live that is only $15 for a $175 value product which is basically I usually have it at $30 which is also crazy so it's only $15 so uh, check it out it'll be live until Monday of whatever the date that is after Black Friday so Monday the 28th so if you didn't make it even $30 is a really dope purchase for the perch uh, for the uh, products price so not even kidding over 672 plus uh, different people already purchased the pack so it's not new it's not like something it's, it's a thing, okay? It's my number one product because you get all those uh, products in the actual store plus all the ones that come out of the store. Uh, basically, if I you know make a new product, make a new pack, you get it for free email to you if you have the access to the everything pack. So it's a pretty dope purchase. Uh, basically, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said, it starts off with a sketch. It goes into Illustrator. It shows you all the cool lining and stuff like that, all the basics, and really helps you understand uh, what I kind of like helped understand what a mascot design is and how you can express yourself with it. Of course, this is a like, basic you know, concept. It has, a, it has no real crazy expression. It's symmetrical, but it's also really dope and it does look actually pretty cool. And also it ends with at least showing you guys all the basis of it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, talk to you guys later. So sit you out. Peace. All right, guys, so basically today, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to sketch a nice cool little line out. So basically, I do have to my left a nice little, uh, like a line picture. I'll probably like post it like somewhere around the screen just so you guys can see what I'm looking at as well. So I know I probably like went over this last clip, but if I did not, and if I forgot somehow, all I'm gonna be doing is really just sketching out shapes. Like I said before, you really don't have to know how to draw, but you actually have to know at least how to do shapes. And like, I'm talking really, really simple, basic shapes, like a rhombus, like a square, uh, you know, rectangles, triangles, is all I'm gonna be really using, in a sense, when I actually sketch out this cool little line. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is you're not, like, sketching out all these different features, all of his fur, you're not doing all of that, because really, like, realistically, if you look at mascot logos, it really just has, like, fun highlights, like, place highlights that, you know, either make sense of the expression, or make sense to just make it look cool. And that's literally all it really is. So if I get started right now, I'm just gonna show you guys really quickly what I mean by, like, taking shapes. So I'm gonna be really just doing like a rhombus, like it would be like kind of like a diamond. I don't know why I said rhombus, but same difference, right? Like a diamond shape, right? Uh, realistically, like you know, two you know triangles if you think about it. Also, his mouth area, his or his nose area, at least, is gonna be like another triangle, like right here. Um, when you look at his like mane, it's literally gonna be like a whole bunch of other triangles. Like this is what I'm just thinking in my head. Like realistically, give me a second. Does this is like a line right now? Kinda, if you are, you're lying to me if you th say yes, but like in a way, you can kinda start seeing what I mean by if you start doing things, it takes shape and it starts to take the shape of whatever animal you are doing. So that is what I'm gonna be doing. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with at least the head shape, right? So for the head shape, I'm looking at something like this. All right, we're looking at like something like this. It comes out pretty far, and his head like kind of dips in right here. Not a dramatic dip, a pretty, pretty non-dramatic dip. He has like really big cheeks, yeah, big cheeks, and uh, something like that. Does that look bad? I mean, okay. For one thing, I know for sure when I do this, when I do sketches on my own in my free time, whatnot, I do say to myself a lot: Does this just look like? A lion. Now, if we're just doing this shape right here, if I'm gonna be realistic, no, it really does not look like a lion because it's just a shape right now, and it's just you know something to work with. But 
when you have something like this, if you get stuck and you're like, oh, it doesn't look like a line, I don't know what to fix, just actually just keep going for a second, all right? I promise you, you might actually start to see what you want to see. Now, this is my head shape. And also, cool thing is that when we do these mascot logos, I'm going to be doing a symmetrical design. I don't know if I said it before, but it's a symmetrical design. So everything I do on one side, all I really have to do is like make, I like I did these little dotted lines going into like a line down here to kind of give me a half and half sense. And that's all I'm really doing is give me like a half and half sense so that I know in the future when I move to Illustrator, these are going to be pushed toward this side. So there's going to be this same exact mirrored, you know, shape on one side. So you don't really have to like try to like, um, copy on one side. You can really just focus on one side. Uh, one side is pretty cool. So we're going to do with a little nose here. Now I'm going to overlap on this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say the nose looks kind of like a triangle and a W put together. Right? Something like this almost. Probably not as dramatic and not as skinny. I feel like it's a lot more like something like this. Right? Mm. Kinda in a way. You're finding yourself, like if you find yourself stuck like this, it's literally, it's it's a process. It's not gonna be something you're gonna know how to do. Even if you do know how to draw, even if you do know how to do everything, it's still gonna be a process to try to figure out does this look like what I want it to look like. Realistically, I think what I'm missing here is just a little more, kind of like a little more drag over here. So I can actually get his little mouth right. Right, so something like here, drag this out a lot more, and then do something like that, and that way his mouth can go right here. Yes. Okay, so, this looks pretty good. So literally what I did was, I went ahead and just kind of like drew like, it's almost like a couple hearts. Like you can kind of see that this is a heart right here, right, and then this is like another heart, and this is just like a, like a triangle, sure, we'll say that. And that's all I'm really doing. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of like, kind of fix this a little more make a little more darker as well and I think that's pretty good and I'll just make this over here darker as well and try to keep as like these like dark strokes as possible that way I have something in the pen tool if I'm really really lost in uh, Illustrator and for me I think that's pretty dang good so and that's really just the head shape this would be the uh there's like a little nose kind of like as an indention of his nose and then to actually get his nose down it just like it, we're literally just looking at shapes like if you can't tell right now his nose honestly just looks like a big ass triangle with a w in the middle and then his face is more like like i said a rhombus and then for his nose i feel like it's just another triangle but i'm gonna try and like try to look you know make it look a little better than just a triangle so something like it was in a little bit here Something like that, right? And I can make that look cooler within um, Illustrator. Now, realistically, if you say to yourself, well, I don't want it like right here, you don't have to make your sketch perfect. Just say to yourself, okay, I need to make this bigger, and I also need to move this down. Like, you can just write down, and move that down, make it bigger, make it down, whatever, and then you just keep a note, right? You don't have to make it super, super perfect. It's a sketch, you know what I mean? It's not like your final product. No one's gonna see this part unless you're doing this horror like me. Um, okay, for his main, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm looking at triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something like this. All right, and I, I like to do something like this. It's like spiky, spiky hair, like kinda. It's like a Goku thing going on here. Um, Something like that, right? And I do something like this, something like that. that and then like, something like that. Now, okay, I'm gonna fix this just a little bit, right? So I kinda want like a nice, one here, here, keep it like this, there, and there. Okay, that doesn't look bad, I can work with that, right? And like I said, this is all just practice kind of stuff going on here. Like, it can be final if you want it to be, or you can just go into Illustrator and you can fix and do this over again, because this is really not that, you know, complicated. Um, But yeah, I'm okay with that, actually. And like, like I said, this is all just like triangles. I'm just doing triangles on the outside. Here's like another big triangle, what this is right there. It's like another triangle here. His nose, another triangle. Um, And for his like eyes here, it would just be, what does it look? It's like something like this, just something like that, right? Of the sort. Right, it's kind of something like that, but they're more like, it's really just like another circle. I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to copy it exactly. Oh, it's just like another circle and then something like that, right? It's just like a shape that goes like this. What's going on with his little like little eyelid there? Something like this, right? So just kind of make it look cooler on the left-hand side. And that's the cool thing about using half and half. You can just give yourself a little a nicer idea. And um, of course, he has like little whiskers, right? 
I don't know if we're going to do these in Illustrator, but you just draw whiskers, make it look cool. Um, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So also I do know when I do strokes within Illustrator, it's actually pretty cool because I don't like to always just use like a stroke where you actually use the actual, uh, you know, option stroke within Illustrator. And I want to go ahead and just kind of like figure out what I want to see behind it. So if, for really like for just in case you don't really understand, um, his face is either going to be black or white, right? Let me just, uh, it's going to be like black or white. Or it's going to be color. Is it going to be color? I mean, no. His face is definitely going to be black and white. His nose is definitely going to be black. His hair over here can actually be a color. It can either be a color or like a gray, which would be pretty cool. And then I guess you can say, you know, what I'm doing here. Like, I'm going to start from here. And I'm going to say, like, what I'm doing here, which would be like the stroke realistically, from here to here will also be black. So you can help understand. Now... Uh, what I mean by stroke, usually strokes will finally like, copy the exact, like, you know, the width in every single short corner within Illustrator, the uh, the actual option will go ahead and kind of give you that exact shape, like, protruded outside, right? But for me, I kind of, like, think it gives more character if you do it on your own. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch, yet again, another example of, like, another main outside here. And it also kind of gives the, uh, I guess, the illusion that there's, like, layers of hair, which realistically there are, on like, a mane and lion. So this will look pretty cool. Now, you can start to see a line here. You can't say that it's not completely perfect, but right here, I know right here, I have to push this out. So I'm going to say to myself, I have to push this out, push out, right? Because it's kind of too skinny from here to here, right? And then also, let's say, um, this is actually pretty okay. I think we're almost done here. Actually, realistically, I think we are done with this sketch. I'll just make everything a nice dark stroke so I can actually see it with an illustrator, right? Something like that. Okay. I'm actually pretty satisfied with this. And so that's literally all we did. Just, here we go, more triangles on the outside. Right? And then that's all you really have to do. Now, I see that and you're saying to yourself, okay, I try this, it looks nothing like this. Well then, once again, focus on the shapes, okay? You have to you have to at least understand what shapes you're looking at. Like I said, on that picture over there, I'm looking at triangles here, right? I'm looking at the triangle with a W in the inside, is literally what I'm saying. Like, W is what that is. So I'm basically taking this right here, this W, and this part of the triangle, and making the nose, essentially, right? And that goes without the in, like, that goes throughout the, the entire actual design. You can see this looks like triangles on the outside, like his face, or his face, like I said, is a rhombus, right? or like a like a square concept if you want to say that as well and that's really really what it is now um i think we're pretty much done here like the eyes i'm not incredibly good at but i think i'll just leave it something like this and i work with it in illustrator and whatnot right that looks pretty cool um let's see uh let's kind of make his nose just a little better okay so yeah we're gonna throw this into Illustrator and you're gonna see, we're gonna make this into freaking magic, okay? We're gonna throw on some like shapes, we're gonna throw on some strokes, and we're gonna throw on some highlights and make it a lot cooler. Now, your sketch is gonna always look less or look just a little bit, yeah, when it compared when you put it into Illustrator and put some work into it. Now, this is a pretty quick sketch. It can be a quick sketch. You can take an hour on a sketch, you can take two hours on a sketch, you can take 10 seconds on a sketch and then throw it in Illustrator and they'll, I think all the time it'll always look better in Illustrator unless you're a great drawer. But if you're like me and you suck at drawing, this is the best it's gonna get and you're gonna throw it in Illustrator, you're gonna make it 10 times better. So, like I said, we're gonna throw this in Illustrator, and you know, you can sign it, make it cool, be like, hey, and then you can like put on Behance and be like, you know, get that cool, like, freaking, whatchamacallit, like a, uh, like a, like a, whatchamac, what do you, what do you call those things? Templates? Oh god, mock ups, right? Be like, oh, uh, here's my sketch right here, and then here's like the process. So, save your sketch if you wish to, but the way I export mine, if you're wondering, I use my phone. And then I actually just email it to myself. And I go on my computer, get the email, and then that is how I bring my sketch. So you don't have to use a scanner. If you want to use a scanner, go for it. But literally, you can just take a picture of it um, and just toss it in your email. So we're going to do that, and we're going to head right in there right now. Sweet. All right, guys. Now that we are in Illustrator, we are ready to go. We have our sketch about to be put, uh, be placed in here. Really quickly, I want to show you guys the, the, uh, the document size that I use when I'm in Illustrator. I go ahead and go to File, New change my units to points and I make my width and my height both at 4k now the reason for that is when I actually like use this document if I want to save like 4k image or something like that uh, which is pretty like a pretty big size of course right uh, it can be used for most small things like people would like to use their logos for and also of course uh, after excuse me I said after effects illustrator is a a vector program right so of course if they need to size anything else again they can just go ahead and resize the document in illustrator 
or just keep the same 4K image and expand it because it is a vector and it can be expand and decrease in size without moving or changing the quality. Now, um, like that's what I mean by when I go to file, save for web, they can just have this saved as a 4K by 4K uh, resolution uh, points in uh, PNT24 and they get a nice little picture out of it, right? So. I don't want to take incredible amounts of time in actually doing a mascot design because, of course, my practices, you know, when I do mascot designing, just literally took maybe take up a two and a half to three hours for just practicing, of course. But I want to show you guys at least the actual process of creating a nice, um, good one, of course, right? I'm going to show you guys the process of actually duplicating shapes to make your your facial structures, pen tooling, and like the highlights, shadows. And within like all that, just creating like some just really cool little techniques, right? But I want to take incredible amounts of time, so I'm gonna finish off with a nice little finish off uh, speed art. So it's gonna be pretty cool, little cool little ending right there. So show you guys like all the you know mistakes that I possibly want to fix or little things just to help you guys out in creating and understanding what I mean by you know taking a little more time on it. But of course, the end result is not gonna be at an extremely great, great. Oh my God, it's gonna be more of like a oh this is how I do it. So that's what I plan on doing for you guys today. Really quickly, I want to show you guys the pen tool, however. Uh, if you guys don't know how to use the pen tool, um, also, I'm going to make a new layer really quickly. Use Control r to get rulers or view, or excuse me, view rulers, right? And then just put a ruler in the middle so you can have a ruler and also change your name to ruler so you know what that layer is. That way, you're going to you're, you're gonna thank me because if you're doing something like this where you only have half and half of a sketch, your ruler will help you in duplicating over um, the shape. So... Pen tooling, right? So pen tooling, um, it's kind of like, it's this, it's the same in Photoshop, right? It's the same little process. And of course, if you click once, you get the anchor point. If you click again, you get another anchor point and you can keep clicking all the way until you wanna like come back and actually fill it in and actually close the path down where you can't actually add any more points without actually clicking on your pen tool and selecting or on the path and adding the points itself. Now that is one thing, but of course we have curves in our uh, little sketch here. So the way you do that, of course, is clicking. And your second click, you're gonna click and drag. It gives you two extended points right here, as you can see. And you can hold control on each of the uh, each side and kind of like figure out, you can see if I move over here, it gets more of a curve over there, more of a curve over here. So for something like this little part I'm gonna be doing in the actual, in a little bit, which is a pretty like, pretty unique, really sleek curve, click and drag, oops, excuse me. Click and drag. And then to get this little sleek curve, I'm gonna move this closer to this side and you'll see that the curve gets more sleeker and it's not just a straight line. Now, also a thing you wanna learn is that the other center point does have a purpose. When you click again, you'll see that this has a really, really nice, sleek, um, perfect, like seamless transition of having a nice curve on this side now. That is because you have this selected, or excuse me, this still active, your active uh, uh, extended point over there. Now, also, if you didn't know already, but do something like this, or I'm gonna be penciling something like this, how it has like a point here. All you have to do is hold Alt on your uh, point, at least for Photoshop, but holding Alt, I just have a tendency of doing it. It also does the same exact thing if you just click on it. It just makes it into an actual anchor point where if you click over here, it'll have like a more of a uh, a point area right there, right? So you'll see that that is how I'm going to be doing the hair over here for the main. And like I said, if I just move over here again, there's no curve to go outside. But if you want to make an artificial curve, if you hold Alt, select the, the anchor while it's like, if you like lost like the extended point already, but you can also press Control Z to go back. But Alt... Hold the point, click on the point, and then move this over. This actually brings out an extended point. It'll make an artificial curve for you. However, you'll probably see that this has like a nice, or not a nice, it's kind of like an annoying little, it's very seamless to see, but you'll see that this kind of has like more of a point to it. Right here, you'll see like the point of actually making the curve. Rather than keeping it a regular anchor point, which is something like that, where it doesn't have any point. It's completely seamless, completely perfect. So that is the pen tool, and that is how you're gonna be using the pen tool for today's tutorial. So for the first part we're gonna be doing is the face's, uh, I guess, structure or shape, right? So I'm gonna go about this just like so. And we are gonna go ahead, give this. Also, a quick thing really quick. Um, uh, you see how I have these little black lines here, of course, right? So what you can do is either follow my mouse for a second, is go over here, and then stop here, move it over, make a duplicate, yada, 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 right? We're going to see that in a second. Or you can follow this outside line right here and then finish it off with this entire one shape and then add a stroke for this actual nose part. And then for, if you want to do it the way where you have the face as one layer or one actual uh, shape, you can actually have the, the, excuse me, the nose as another shape and have it above it. But I like to do it and follow the path like on its own like this, right? That's how I would like to do it. But you can also, like I said, finish it off going this way and then making the nose afterwards. But I feel like it's got a little tedious that way. 
but whatever way works for you. Now, I'm going to turn off my stroke and fill. If you guys didn't know, notice already, you have a stroke uh, fill, so you have a stroke path, a uh, color chooser, sure, and a fill, right? So this is right here. This is your fill. You can turn it off by either clicking here, which is press none, the little slash. That's how you turn it off. You put a gradient on, or you can put a color on, a solid color. But this is how you both turn them all off, right? I usually like to turn them off for the actual when I'm actually doing everything, and then I'll turn it on later. And the way you do that is you can't really turn it on. You're, you're, it's not like Photoshop. It won't remember what color you want to choose because you're not on a layer. Even if you're on a selected layer, it still doesn't matter what you do. You have to make sure you press the circle target, which will actually allow you to actually then change the color. And there's uh, like a little a little hint for today, a little tip for today, because you will possibly forget. Um, I think I like it like this. We're good with that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to move this up just a little bit, though. And then we're going to just basically do this. Now, holding Alt will allow you to make a duplicate when you're actually clicking on the shape. So I'm going to click on the shape, holding Alt, right? And then also Shift. The reason why I'm holding Shift is also it actually makes the orientation completely the same. So if I were to move this back by holding Shift, you'll see that this is perfectly still in the same orientation line. So if I were to, when I right-click, Transform, Reflect, pressing OK, and then if I put them together, they will be perfectly symmetrical on both sides. But if you weren't holding shift, really quick, I'm going to show you guys by uh, hiding this layer. If you weren't holding shift, you made a duplicate. Let's just say you went holding alt only to make it like a, a duplicate of it. You'll be able to see that if I come back around this way, it's by not holding shift, you actually might mess up and actually ruin the actual orientation. So make sure you guys hold shift just to make sure. And then what you guys can do, this is not perfect. Of course not. I didn't actually move it over yet. Boom. Now it's on the same exact line, right? No, it's not. We got to make sure these lines are together on the blue line. I don't know if I, I forgot if I did the, the bottom the bottom one or not. But make sure that these lines are on, both on the blue line that way. And you want to do that like when you actually f figure this one out. You want to make sure that these are on the lines before you duplicate it. But I just did it just now just because I could. And I'm going to go ahead and go use the shape, uh, excuse me, the pathfinder. So you want to go to Windows and then you want to go to Pathfinder. And then this is going to allow you to give these little shape modes here. It's probably going to be like in here somewhere. Just you can move it out if you want to. But it gives you the shape modes where you have unite, separate, etc. And what you want to do is you want to unite. Because right now, as you can see, these are two different shapes that you can move out, right? If you select both of them with shift click, click on unite, this will allow it to be actually one entire uh, shape. So it's a pretty cool little thing. I would definitely suggest you to do that. And for like most of the, like for the rest of this entire thing, because I will be doing that myself to make one shape, it's kind of like a secure way of making sure that this, it's basically like saying you pencil this entire thing out perfectly, but what you just really do is symmetrical use duplications and it's pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna turn off a fill for this and put on a stroke. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use stroke over here. And if you don't have this up, go to Windows Stroke. Also, if you don't have these options, the cap corner, uh, align the stroke, you probably don't have show options enabled. So make sure you click that on the top right. So when you have this selected, I'm at a 4K by 4K resolution. So I'm going to use 60 points, just like so. And then you'll see, you don't really worry about this for now, the corner caps and stuff like that. Just worry about align for stroke. And you can use uh, align center. Inside, you'll see a change go to the inside and only on the outside, right? So the center is kind of like both sides of the path are even. This one's only on the inside of the path. And this is only on the outside of the path. So I like to use inside a lot more. Now, some people use strokes in a different way, but really quick before I show you guys that, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this by holding Alt and dragging this layer below it, kind of like Photoshop as well. And I'm gonna turn on a fill for this. That way we have two different separate layers for each of the face stroke, stroke, we're just gonna keep it, and then face period, right? And um, that's just so you can, you, you'll you'll thank me later if you do this. Do not use the same layers. I know both layers have, you can turn both the stroke and the fill on on one separate shape, but use, or one solid shape, but use a separate shape because it'll save you guys much time if you got to change anything or fix anything. I promise you, promise you, promise you to make sure you actually leave it as is with two different shapes. Now, some people like to use stroke by using like a duplicate of the face, right? Selecting this one and go to, I believe, object, uh, path, offset path. And then you can change this around here. And this does also make a stroke as well. It depends which one you want to do. All of them work. Uh, that's just another little technique. There's going to be a bunch of techniques. People are going to be like, oh, you shouldn't really do that in the comments section below. And I'll be like, it's just really what works for you kind of thing. So what I'm going to do really quickly is show you guys that you can also use transparency, which is like opacity in Photoshop, right? So you can turn it on by going to Windows Transparency, go to the opacity, and you can lower the opacity so you can see through the face color, and you can change that a little bit, right? 
So that way I can actually finish this little nose. So for this, what I like to do is gonna make the little extended nose part. Cause right now this just looks like a, you know, you know what it looks like. So basically we're gonna go ahead and finish off the stroke of the nose. So I'm gonna basically kind of fix this so it actually aligns with the same exact little curvature on this black line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this control point uh, and then make sure that's like that. I'm gonna click on it to make it uh, straight and no extended point. And I'm gonna make a nice little point right there and then connect it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to do, oops, I gotta fix this first, which I'm gonna have to do, is I'm gonna change this color to the same color as this stroke. So to get that stroke color, basically select the target color, click on the stroke, control C, come over here, click on the fill color and control V. Very simple, right? To take that same exact color. And then what you can do as well is alt shift, drag it over, right click, transform, reflect, and press okay. And then move this on the same exact line, just like so, and then you're good to go. Uh, oh, I missed. It's like one pixel too far. That'll work. Sweet. So there you guys see that this is kind of like now forming a nose, but I want to finish the actual nose itself. Now I'm going to use the ruler again here because I want to know where the middle is. So I'm going to make my little nose. I'm going to show you guys a little technique, right? Cool little thing you can do when you're doing your nose is when you make your, your solid shape and make sure, of course, you zoom in. Uh, also, you might run into the problem where you say, use a direction selection tool. Use A on your keyboard with the shortcut. That's how you select a point on its own. If you're using this tool, which is the actual selection tool, if you try to select one point and move it over, you're actually moving over the entire design without you probably noticing because you're zoomed in. So if you're saying, why am I moving my entire thing? It's because you're using the uh, direct selection tool. Make sure you're using the actual, or because you, you're using the um, selection tool, which is this one right here, right? The V selection uh, shortcut which is the selection tool which is gonna move the entire actual path, but if you're using the direct selection tool, it's gonna to only choose one point at a time, which will allow you to move one point at a time. Also, you can also select all the points with this tool. If you were selecting one point, you can hold Alt, click, and then also move the entire thing as well. So that is a little shortcut. Now, for the nose, little cool thing, is if you press L on your keyboard, it brings the ellipse tool. Now, what this is gonna allow you to do is, of course, make a circle. So if I just make a circle, I'm gonna try and make a nostril, right? So for like the, the person's, excuse me, the uh, the animal's nose. So if I shift click on the, both of these layers, you'll see that um, you'll see that there's three different shapes really inside this actual selection. If I press shift M, it gives me the shape builder tool. Now you can also see right here, when I hover over, there's actually basically three honest uh, shapes. So if I click on one shape right here, you'll see that this circle is no longer actually a complete like ellipse. It's more of three different shapes. So you can see right now, that is a way you can also cut out the nose here. But what I'd like to do is basically see that if, okay, this is not cut out no longer. Shift M, shape bullet tool. There's a plus sign and there's also a minus sign. So basically what minus does is we'll take away that shape within the other shape of the shape builder tool. So if I click minus, minus over here as well, there you go. Now you only have a one sided, you know, a nice cut out of a circle, which is completely perfect. You really can't pencil it out unless you're really good at it. But if you are, that's fine. Or if you don't want to do this, that is also fine. But that is a way you can make a really simple, quick nostril, which looks pretty cool. And now you can simply go ahead and make it in one to one by using the shape builder tool or the pathfinder and then using night. There we go. Now we got our nose that looks pretty sick. We're gonna move this a little farther down and make it a little bit bigger. And there we go, now we have our nose, which looks pretty badass. So, basically now, I'm gonna actually do the, uh, really quickly, I'm gonna do the bottom of this, little chin area, I guess, or his mouth area. Make sure I use my ruler. Click, boom, right. Make sure these are on the blue line, so when I duplicate it, it's actually perfect. And also, you can see that this little white line right here is because of your face. It's because of this layer right here. If you want to get rid of that, all you have to do is click on your face layer, select your face layer, and then use control and just bring in it with alt and shift select it on the corner. Bring it in just a little bit. And you'll get rid of that annoying line right there. That's just a way you can fix it really quickly. And I'm going to go ahead now and finish this off by uh, putting this like here. Moving that like right there is pretty good as well. And then alt sh uh, shift, drag it over, transform, reflect, put it on this point, connect these points to unite. And now it's one solid shape. Sweet. Now I got a little mouthpiece thing going on there. Uh, I like it. Perfect. 
Sweet. So now what I'm going to do is, is the main part. So I showed you guys how to actually use that sharp or how to make that sharp corner. So that's what I'm going to be doing for this. I'm going to put a new layer below everything. And we're going to start this off. I'm going to close off the actual uh, fill color as well so there's no color when I do this. So I'm going to do something like this, right? Select. You can't really see my pencil that well, but it's right here. I'm pressing Alt, click on this point to make an anchor point. Click, drag, and now there's a nice sharp corner here. So if I actually do turn this on, you'll see there's a nice sharp little edge there. I can press Alt click or actually just click on it as well and make a nice click drag and then you're just basically repeating that and of course it depends where you're doing it if you're even doing a hair style like this um you can probably like google like or uh different ways to make mascot hair i don't really know i don't really know if that's actually a thing but all i'm doing is doing like basically triangles is kind of what i'm thinking in my head when i'm actually doing this and all you gotta do is when you finish it out is go ahead oh i lost the pen tool there it is oh god uh there we go and then something like this and then i'll connect it over here at the top all right and i'll zoom in make sure it's in the middle that is in the middle is this one in the middle no not quite make there make sure this is in the middle and this is kind of like a basic rinse and repeat kind of process now for me this is a little too close to the face. I think I said that in the sketch. I was going to move this over a little bit. And there we go. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Like, that actually looks dope as hell. Sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact routine. Connect this beast over here. Unite it with the Pathfinder tool. And now we have our mane going on. So you can see that this is starting to actually take form of a line, which is actually really, really sick. And I'm very happy you can probably start to see it now. Also, what I'm going to do is uh, select this and click on that and make sure that is that color. It looks like almost like a monkey as well. Um, but we're going to actually show you guys really quickly. I'm going to make sure that this is going to be our color for the main, right? Your color, you'll, I'm going to be super tilted. You're probably not going to like the color I chose because I don't like the color I chose. And I'm also going to change my face to opacity 100. So that's what I'm going to do as well. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, uh, we're going to actually make this into a stroke. Am I? Um, yes, we're gonna do that and make it to a stroke really quick. So go ahead, make it to a stroke, make sure I use the same stroke color. Uh, super inner width, I don't know if I can use 60, of course, that's too wide. So of course there's gonna be different stroke uh, sizes between everything, because this is like the mouth little section. And what I'll do is I'll make a new layer below that, and then quickly go around it, and then fill that in with a fill, right? That's what I told you guys before, to try to use, um, two separate layers for each at least part of it so you'll, you'll thank me later like i said so this there we go we got something else going on here and it looks pretty badass right and you also saw what i did before where i didn't actually put strokes in before at the moment it looked like kind of like a like a what do you call it? like a what is like a shadow but not a shadow you guys a silhouette right that's also another designing technique how people like to do mascot designs so right now for me this looks super dope and like i said before in the actual sketching video is that you can do two things when you want to do the stroke you can either do this make a duplicate of the actual main by holding alt dragging a layer below it selecting it with the target circle putting on the stroke turning off the fill put your stroke on put it to 60 i'll just put it to 60 now putting it on the outside and then just change your color to the actual stroke color of the inner face as well. And then you can do something like that. However, it doesn't look as cool and it looks kind of lazy and it doesn't, I don't really like it so much. That's why I don't like to do it. What I like to do is I like to just make a new layer and actually pencil it out myself again. And I think it also gives your main or whatever you're doing a lot more character. So I'm gonna do that right now and we're gonna speed it up just a little bit so I can get this going for you guys. Okay, perfect. Now that we have this here, basically all that's really left is highlights and the eyes. Right now I'm gonna do the highlights really quickly to show you guys how I do that. Now there's two different ways you can do it. You can depend on the entire left side or whatever, duplicate it over and like follow the exact, I'm gonna show you guys what I mean actually. Make a new layer above your main, right? Which is this inner color right here. And I'm gonna use my rulers as well to say this is where I wanna start. Now what you can do is basically go around and kind of like, this is the part where you're gonna have to have fun, right? This is like, 
the kind of like what makes the actual design look alive. It looks a lot more better when you actually have highlights. It looks kind of boring if you don't. So have fun with this. What I'm basically doing is kind of mimicking what's going on on the outside, but not completely making it, of course, perfect to what's in the, the outside red here. I'm kind of having fun with it, right? And I'm going to connect it just like so, right? That was pretty fast. And like you can have a lot more fun with that. I'm going to just go ahead and act, not go up, actually. You see, I'm not focusing on what's going to be happening. If I duplicated this on this side, it would look like were, the actual main was black, and then we did a red highlight to make sure that you understand what I'm doing. I'm going to go around this way, right? Clicking on this blue line and connecting it. So what I'm going to be basically doing is using the Shape Builder tool like we do with the actual nose is clicking on both of these, either shift clicking on the actual uh, groups or shift clicking on the actual target layers, shift M, holding alt, pressing minus, or see the minus, click on it, and now we have a shape right here within it. This is what we want, right? Because we have a color on the inside and then we're gonna have a color on the outside. Now what you can do is hold I on your keyboard or click I on your keyboard. It gives the eyedrop tool, select the same color as the main, and then you can basically double click over here on the selection tool for color, selection color tool, and then going up a little bit to the left to make it a vibranter, a vibranter, does that even make sense? A more vibrant red. Now you can go about like using actual, uh, you know, complementary colors or whatever. But basically, highlights is in either a lighter shade of the actual design or a darker shade. It depends on what you do. Um, it all really, honestly, like of course, lighter, lighter, lighter shades are uh, highlights, and then of course, I didn't actually. Do I actually not fix this? Oh man, rip! I forgot to fix this. Um, lighter shades are highlights, and then darker shades are shadows. All right, so now I think that's fixed. I think I did that right now. Um, go ahead and reflect it, and then we'll keep it on this point here, and then see if it merges together, and it doesn't up top, but that's okay. That'll work. You can see, there we go. Now we have a little highlight there, which looks pretty dope. You can also do a highlight on the face. Now that also, it's like a really big deal. I feel like it doesn't look as cool if you don't have a highlight in the face as well. I don't even have my eyes in here yet, but I'm gonna quickly do like a simple highlight on the faces, which I'm kind of like I said before, is mimicking the outside. And with the face, I always like to have a white face and a gray highlight on the face. So let's do something like this. I'll give a little character by doing like a little thing right here. Stopping at this point here and cutting through. Uh, just like so cutting through going around actually I'm gonna go outside right outside the face remember click on this blue here this line to make sure it's in the middle then I'm gonna go ahead and select the face which is right here shift click on both of them I can delete that just like so and as long as this face stroke is under it it'll be perfectly fine and now you can basically take this layer make it into a nice gray and go ahead and move this and duplicate this over Reflect it and go about this connecting it over here and I have a nice little You know highlight on the face over here as well So right there it automatically looks a lot better it looks a lot more fun looks like more You know it just looks so much better when you put highlights around now the eyes are kind of difficult So I'm gonna show you guys how I kind of go about the actual features of my eyes on my mascots uh, You can see here. I kind of like kind of did it over here and basically what I did was I went ahead and uh, just kind of like did an eyelid and then actually then apply the eye. So I'm going to show you guys kind of like my go-to when I do my eyes. So basically, I like to do like an eyelid thing. I call it an eyelid thing because that's what it is to me. Um, Something like that, right? Kind of looks like eyebrows. <laughs> you can call it whatever it is. It's supposed to be like the eye socket, right? There's the eye socket. Below the eye socket is a new layer with a different pen tool. That actually has the eye in it right okay so I can make this color into black oops why'd I cancel it press ok next time there you go there we go now we have like a black eye actually we want a, a red eye there we go and now what you can do I also want a black eyelid there we go now we're looking good I'll make this a little bigger really quickly I like that, and this is a little too wide at the top. Like I said, you'll you'll struggle, <laughs> I promise you. Everyone does. That's just the design process and what you're basically getting paid for if you do this for a client and stuff. Um, so what you can do also to kind of like highlight the eyes, you can do a, lo a little like a little just a little fun stuff. Like 
do something like this and make it black. Uh, it's kind of like, I guess, a little added little feature you can do there. Or even like use a reference as well. Just go on Google, get like, you know, lion's face close up or something like that and figure out what shapes are honestly in the eye. But of course the eyes do give a very, very big emotion dip. So if you're not, if you like, don't make your eye look at least somewhat believable, you'll make your eyes look like your, your lion's about to cry or something like that. You want to make it look fierce. So I'd like to have this like triangle going downward kind of thing going. I'm going to duplicate this over, reflect it, press OK. And basically, those are my eyes. Like, it kind of looks like he's about to cry, like I said. Um, I think that's okay. I'm actually going to move them down. Also, to group things in Illustrator, all you got to do is make a new layer. Shift click on all the layers you want to put in, and then just drag them in. Very, very simple. That way, I can actually drag everything down here. It looks a little better. Um, I mean, they are okay, but I would love to fix them. But I don't want to take too much time. But I do not like incredibly much how this is actually looking. I would like to have this a little further out, like this way. Like something like that. But like I said, this is like a process. You can't really just get this done in the, like the time I did. I just want to show you guys all the basics of how I'd go about it. I think that looks okay. Uh, that'll work for now. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that, duplicate that over. And basically, I would say we're practically done. Now, the end of this tutorial is going to be like a little speed art of me like kind of finishing and fixing what I kind of don't like or what I really wanted for the actual thing. Like You can like you look at the face over here or excuse me, the picture that you use for reference and kind of like figure out what you honestly really, really want to have. Like I know for the noses, they have more of like a little lip action going on here. So you can add that in. Uh, you can add like a nicer uh, or a nice little outside ring um, highlight for the actual, like the coating in the back, like this back, uh, I guess stroke you would call it, right? And uh, you can do all of that fun stuff. And that's all more or less like what you want to do with the design overall, right? So basically right now, as you can see, my mascot does look like a lion, honestly, and it just looked pretty freaking cool. So, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Do not forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Please check the top of the link for the everything pack that is $15, $150 value for only $15. Are you kidding me? And you also get every product that comes out of my store for free, emailed to you at the same exact day it comes out. Pretty freaking awesome pack. And it's also, if you don't get the pack if you, on the sale date, uh, please just go ahead and check it out. $30 is honestly a good price for it as well. Uh, 670 people currently have it, 670 plus. And it's a really, really great product for you guys to use as new designers. Also, for Follow me on Twitter at SysoHQ. If you want to ask me any questions or anything like that, please go ahead and do so in the Twitter or comment section below. Um, please go ahead and check out Top 3 Designs uh, series, Top 3 Designs of the Week, where you get some really cool exposure, all that fun stuff. And I really hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Talk to you guys next time. Please, please subscribe and like. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I love... I love, I, dude, like, I love doing this now. Like, I want to do more tutorials. If you guys want to see more local tutorials, let me know. And uh, we're going to get that going. So talk to you guys later. Sesame you out. Peace.